welcome to the 72 PC podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game. Today's game is going to be Rocket League, of course. As usual, one of these days we'll do a different one. Um, with us this week, we have me, who is Adam. I'm going to stall a little bit while Tom gets it situated I'm, with I'm his here. mic. Uh, we I'm have here. Tom. Tom's here. And we have Eric. I'm Eric, and I'm totally not missing this week. <laughs> Oh no, we don't have Eric. I know my impression was flawless, but that was that was me. Sorry. How's it going, Tom? Um, pretty good. Uh, just checking something real quick. For some oh. reason, my Twitch lagged out, and it showed the "Hey, we're getting started soon." Like, and I'm like, "Oh shit, did we not actually start?" No, <laughs> we, we did. It was just Twitch. We started. It's, cool. it's fine. So, uh, uh, I got something kind of special this week. Oh, I'm special. excited to show it off. I oh, got, I, I got a beautiful. I gotta, I gotta rearrange some windows here. Okay. I, I only have so many monitors, so I don't usually get to see the our cameras because of all the other stuff. Oh, look at that glass! Honestly, that's that's a little much, but I, I poured a little bit much. A little, a little much. It's fine. Yeah, it's, fine. It's, it's fine. It'd be all right, you know. So uh, have an extra glass of water later. Yeah. Be okay. Yeah. I. Uh... God damn. <laughs> I picked up the Glenlivet 15. Ooh. Now, they're Fancy. not sponsoring us, of course, but it's if, pretty good. If they'd like to. So, we're here. I have a question for you, and sure. really for anyone watching. What kinds of scotch do you like? Do you like the stuff that's like smoky or peaty or spicy or sweet? Like, what, what kind of things are, are you going after when you pick up scotch? Uh, for scotch, me? Um... I haven't had a whole lot of varieties. I've had just like f three or four of them. Uh, definitely, definitely the PD, the super. I want it to taste like a forest, a mossy forest is on fire <laughs> in my mouth. Because I don't okay. know. It's the, the intensity is interesting and nothing else really tastes like that. Like yeah. leather yeah. and moss and fire. And I, I don't know. It's weird, but it's 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 enjoyable sometimes. It it tastes like you you went to like a mossy stone and just yeah. like licked the shit out of it <laughs> <laughs> while burning um, your tongue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they, like it's on fire and you're licking it. <laughs> There's no way so, to uh, describe it to make it sound pleasant. Yeah, I know. It's Scotch, impossible. Scotch is so weird. Like I was I was trying to tell Renee about scotch and whiskey and everything like that and she abhors whiskey yeah absolutely fucking hates it so i'm like oh hey here sniff this one it's really sweet it's got this nice body to it and she's like oh, oh no it tastes it smells like <laughs> bad like just bad um what's helpful it's on the back of this box i got like a little graph so apparently this one is really spicy mm. and uh kind of smoky Okay. So uh, if, if you like like that that harsh, zesty spice in scotch, uh, the Glenlivet 15, it's basically just spice. It's really okay. good, but that is the overwhelming flavor you're going to get. From Sounds like something I could enjoy. I like the spice. Yeah. It's the, and, spice, uh, it's the uh, spice of life. I mean, whiskey, whiskey isn't, or uh, scotch isn't cheap, right? Like, there yeah. are cheap scotches out there. But the Glenlivet 15, like, this bottle for the whole thing, I want to say it was, like, 60 bucks here. But we've got crazy mm -hmm. taxes, so it's going to be, like, 40-ish, oh, okay. yeah. 30-ish, 40-ish, anywhere else. Okay. Um, so, honestly, isn't all that expensive. So, yeah. if you want some spicy scotch, there you go. I might I might try that at some point. I, I buy alcohol so infrequently, buy and drink alcohol so infrequently, I don't mind spending... A little extra on a bottle of something nice because yeah. it's not something i'm doing all the time so it you know i'd rather pay a little extra and you know try something really nice and new and interesting for sure scotch is usually my celebration drink like if i'm just drinking like i'll have beer mm -hmm. i'll have like cheap whiskey or bourbon or vodka yeah. or whatever but scotch is typically reserved for the I want to chill out. It's going to be a good night. I'm relaxing. Or the, hey, you know, this cool thing happened at work. Or I got a promotion. Or, hey, we lived another day. It's my celebration drink. 
We did. So live today, today we're celebrating. We're celebrating making it <laughs> eight months into 2020. Yes. So cheers. Wow. Yes. Eight months. Jesus. It feels like it's been eight years, honestly. Right? Oh, man. oh my you, God. You ready to get into some games? Yeah, let's do this. All right, let's start the queue. Yeah, it's been, uh, man, it's been a lot. I don't want to talk yeah. too much about it on here because nah. I feel like I feel like the podcast is a great escape from life, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the last thing we want to do on here is talk about all of the things <laughs> wrong with life. It's like, no, nah, we, ha- yeah. we have plenty of that, you know, naturally we don't need to we don't need to go over that too much here yeah and uh i i've played a lot of fun stupid games um have you tried the fall guys beta no i haven't but i saw the lots of buzz in our discord about that and i watched a little bit of uh magic dave play it um not this weekend it was a few couple weeks ago or something he played the the first uh, beta weekend or whatever they did it's um <laughs> so i i bought it and what's what's weird is that i always rail against pre-orders i'm like ah if you pre-order a game you don't know what you're getting it's like it's like fucking going to a restaurant and being like hey chef surprise me here's 200 dollars or here's 60 <laughs> bucks and you don't you don't know if that shit's good or not yeah and when he hands it to you if it's like literally a seeming pile of dog shit the chef's just like yeah, whatever, man. You paid for it. Buyer beware. Like, <laughs> all right, that that fucking sucks. Yeah. Um, but what's cool is that this open beta, literally, uh, or not totally open, semi open beta, mm-hmm. um, literally just gives you the the fucking game. So I played some of the game, a, a few hours of it. I realized, holy shit, this is going to be a fun little party game. And yeah. then I bought it. It hey. was great. It was literally the same effect as a demo, except uh-huh. that I can report bugs and. Uh, we can, you know, stress test the servers. That's a good model, I think, for that. Yeah. Like, there were severely lacking, and I know there's some PC demos, but we're severely lacking overall and being able to try out games before buying them without having to go through, like, the whole refund process from Steam or whatever, which I'm, I haven't done. I heard it's pretty painless. Oh, it's but, it's trivial. It's yeah. great. But, uh, but no, it's nice to, it, it seems like a good way to do it, right? Mm-hmm. People get to play your game and also bug test it. And then, you know, when they try your game out for the first time in that context, they're already prepared to have issues because it's a beta. So it's, yeah. you know, it's not as bad of a first impression because they're going into it knowing that it might not be, you know, completely release ready. And that's fine. Yeah. And uh, there there are definitely some bugs in Fall Guys. It's not it's not too much. There's nothing uh, that I saw that was like absolutely game breaking. Right. Um, but uh, like uh, tearing textures here and there, the textures just don't wrap around the model quite enough. So it kind of there's like a clear spot in the model where you can see inside the body, mm-hmm. like tiny stuff like that. Or when you put a camera inside of certain objects, parts of the level will disappear due to the back face calling. Like it's it's not you know stuff that shouldn't be fixed. It should, right. but yeah. it's nothing gameplay related. It's all just right. tiny little graphical issues. Yeah. Um, and in a game like that, it, it doesn't, that, that kind of stuff doesn't, I don't want to say it doesn't matter because, you know, everybody wants to have, you know, the, the perfect game without bugs and stuff and that all matters. Mm. But Fall Guys, it has Fall no Guys, on gameplay. yeah, Fall Guys is not a artistic masterpiece kind of game, right? It's a fun game to play no. with your friends and party. Um, you know, in a game like The Last of Us 2 or something, which I understand has a, you know, much larger budget or whatever, but. It's presented mm. to be a work of art, right? That's the kind of the point. So things yeah. like that are a huge deal. But with a party game like this, it's just not... That stuff just doesn't matter as much as being able to just play the game. I gotta say, though, from like a an artistic direction or aesthetic, Fall Guys knows exactly what it is and hits <laughs> it perfectly. It is a goofy-ass kind of... Like, not exactly low poly, but it's yeah. definitely low fidelity sort of just fuck around party game. Yeah. And everything from the models to the textures, to the way the game is rendered to the music just exudes that. Just It's just dripping with the irreverence of, I don't know, man, just go out and have fucking fun, <laughs> uh, which is great. It's, it's a really fun game. And I actually, I won a game. It was crazy. I hey. never win these like 
battle royale style games, which is uh-huh. exactly what it is. It's a battle royale platformer sports game uh t- balancing act thing like there's there's some races you can actually play like a version of soccer to knock no. out the other team there's a bunch of stuff that's like hey it's tag uh you know grab grab these tails from other people and keep it till the round is over uh, or jump through these hoops like it's a bunch of weird stupid bullshit it, yeah. it's great. well it's like a mario party kind of thing isn't it uh yes but without the game board like if mario party were just about the mini games that's kind of what fall guy is but the mini games are way less complicated. It usually involves, hey, uh, go over here to the goal, <laughs> which isn't bad. It's it's really easy because you get literally one or two sentences saying, hey, uh, do this thing. And they're like, okay, cool. I'll do that thing. By the way, there's 60 other people trying to do this thing. And the entire <laughs> game is a clusterfuck. There's um, just a beautiful there's mess. One, it's, it's glorious. There's one level that I have lovingly called uh, Real Fake Doors. Which fake it's, doors. Got a, it's got a bunch of these gates and only a few of them will actually open when you run into them. The mm-hmm. others are just solid fucking walls. Oh my God. So, it's like, uh, what's that? What was that show? The like Japanese game show? Yes. Obstacle course show. What was the name of that? Yep. I can't think of it. I, oh shit. That was exactly one. They had all the, <laughs> they had yeah. all these walls set up with doors, but they were like um, covered in paper or something. So like some of yeah. them they could run through the paper and it would rip and they'd go through and some of them they just slam into the wall. <laughs> so and it, it plays exactly like that. Like uh-huh. it is the stupidest fucking thing because you'll get like 20 people picking one door because you don't want to be the first guy because if you run smack dab into that wall, you've lost speed. Mm-hmm. So you've simultaneously got people like hanging back and then there's one guy who's like, nah, nah, I'm gambling, man. I know this is the right door. Smack right into the wall. And we all see that confidence, right? You see the player rushing forward like, oh, shit, this guy knows what he's doing. Let's follow him. Fuck, 25 people piled up on one door. It is just like clusterfuck. You can see is, the hive mind at work. Yeah. Clusterfuck is the best way to describe Fall Guys. And that is not at all an insult. Yeah. The game is exactly what it wants to be. And it does it very well. Uh, so, yeah, I bought it. It's uh, 20 bucks for the standard edition. I bought the deluxe because A, I could see myself really playing this with a bunch of people in the Discord, and B, Mm -hmm. Devolver Digital, I love them. I absolutely (laughs) love them, and I don't mind giving them an extra 10 bucks. They're uh, they're like games conferences or fake game conferences are absolutely (laughs) fantastic. I didn't see if they did one. Did they do one this year? Uh, They actually put out an interactive one. So you could actually... that's um, right. Yeah, I downloaded it. I never actually launched it. I was going to say, I, I never, I remember, now that you mentioned that, I remember we, that was on a, one of our news segments on one of the episodes, but I, I never did actually go go through with checking it out. Mm-hmm. Love Devolver. <laughs> but Fall um, Guys, uh, you, you definitely recommend? Yeah, I, I think, like, try out the, try out the beta. Like, if mm-hmm. you can get into the beta... Try it out. You're not losing anything except like three or four gigs of hard drive space. It's a tiny ass game. Yeah. Um, and you can easily see if this game is for you. Um, you know, if if you're looking for a fun party game with friends that you can just dick around in, yeah, Fall Guys works perfectly for that. It is it is a weird ass game. <laughs> um, Eric mentioned some concerns last week when he was talking about it. Um I think about replayability, like it getting stale yeah. after a little while. Do you I agree do with that? Not, yes, absolutely. Okay. I do not see this being like a CSGO or Valorant or Overwatch or Rocket League, something that you can play forever because mm-hmm. it's always you know new and different. Fall Guys will get boring, and it could get boring fast. Um, you know, I, I would hope that the devs are going to keep putting out this content. They've got a season system. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be one of those games where I will play it if other people are playing it, but mm-hmm. I'm not going to solo grind this this right, is yeah. this is not a tarkov that's not the this kind of game absolutely for that anyway. not a tarkov no <laughs> uh speaking of tarkov i totally no life that game yesterday <laughs> <laughs> uh nice. was playing some games with rob or smoke in the discord if you don't know his first name um i think that is the only thing i did yesterday other than eat <laughs> and like i pretty much just got home from work and launched Tarkov, p- 
played a couple. Robazon, he joined. We played a bunch of matches. I ended up staying up till like one in the morning playing Tarkov all day nice. long. <laughs> it was just one of those days I couldn't I couldn't stop playing. I don't know. I had full that intentions to play. A, yeah, I had full intentions to play like Death Stranding or something a lot, you know, to make like a big chunk of progress um, in that since I hadn't really played it all week. And I got sucked into Tarkov all day. It's crack, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I'm addicted. I'm gonna have a have to have a problem. Um, but spe- <laughs> That's fantastic. Speaking of Tarkov, though, they are doing a summer sale starting, I think, Monday. So Ooh. if you're if anybody is interested in playing Tarkov after hearing us talk about it, really, let's see for the past few weeks, um, it's gonna be on sale, and the upgrades are on sale too. I'm gonna be upgrading my addition to the super expensive uh, Edge of Darkness edition, which has some in-game perks or whatever. So, so uh, what exactly are the perks for, for that edition? I mean, you get a lot of just, like, random items. like Okay. But obviously all of that is basically disposable because nothing in Tarkov lasts forever. Um, mm. But something that does last forever, if you get it, is the your, like, secure, safe container. Um, in the standard edition of the game, it's a two-by-two two container where if you die during mm-hmm. your raid, whatever's in that container, you get to keep. Um, in this edition, you get a three-by-three three container. Ooh, so, that um, alone might be worth it. Yeah. Um, you also get a head start on the stash upgrades, so your stash is fully upgraded. You have the most space. You know, In the Ooh. standard edition, you find yourself running out of room all the time. Not so much on this one, unless you're a hoarder, which, you know, that's easy to do, I'm too. I'm going to need to check out the, the price on that. It's, do we, do we know... Oh. It's expensive. <laughs> is it? Yeah, I think if you don't own the game already, the game already, it's straight up like 150 bucks or something. Jesus. But um, that's also you also get all of DLC that they do forever. Whenever okay. the game actually releases and stuff, you'll get all the DLC for free and um, you know the secure container stuff and whatever. Uh, there's a lot of little perks or whatever you have to look at the page to see the little rundown but yeah it's expensive the game as a whole i mean yeah. as a pre-release game is kind of pricey i get oh, i don't know mm. there's a lot to the game too so i don't know if i was gonna say like for a like early access pre-release by the beta sort of game it's uh, it's one of the most well put together games i've seen in a while like the, really <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Listen, so, I love the game to death, and I love the concepts, but I don't know if I would say it's super well put together. So I'm comparing it to anything in the AAA market space, right? So take a look at anything the, EA. That, that or especially. Bethesda, or <laughs> no, 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 that's. About. I. That makes your point less valid to me. <laughs> Maybe I'm misunderstanding what you're saying, but. In, no, in the modern Tarkov, era, Tarkov it's one of the is games. Tarkov is janky. Like I love the game and I, and I love most of the aspects of it, but it's janky. It is. I haven't seen much jank from it. Really? Now that said, I'm also trying to run it on a supercomputer from space, so maybe I'm not seeing a I lot mean, of those issues. I don't but... e- not even just the way it runs, which it does run kind of janky. A lot of people have frame rate issues and stuff, but I mean just like a lot of the mechanics and there's, you know, a decent amount of bugs constantly. Okay. Uh, like server desync issues and servers crashing. I mean, there's a lot of stuff. All right. I mean, I've I've died and lost all of my items to game breaking bugs. Uh, in game, not like all my items that I have on my character, mm-hmm. but like you know, all my items for that particular raid. I guess uh, that's true. I guess I have seen a lot of the. Um... You know, you die and you never get that screen, or or you extract and you never get the the item screen. Mm-hmm. And you just lose it all. Yeah, that's happened. Um, I'm trying to think of what other pretty big issues people have had. Obviously, there's kind of a cheater problem on certain maps, uh, which they've worked Ooh. a lot on, and it's gotten better. Um, for a long time, there were stutters, like, for almost half a second. You couldn't, like, your game would just freeze up periodically, multiple times per raid. Um, which, okay. again, they've, they've improved a lot of that kind of stuff, but it's still, it's not... It's not there, you know. It's it's for sure alpha, <laughs> even though they call it a beta. I wouldn't mm. call it an alpha, but 
I guess I'm just surprised that given the amount of systems and mechanics that Tarkov has, it's not more buggy than it is. That, yeah, I guess so. Because I mean, given a lot. the content in the game, it's it should be way, way more of a pile of shit than it is. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I feel again. I'm also comparing it to to Ubisoft games where they're just like, I don't know, man. It it compiled, so we're just gonna release it. (laughs) I haven't had that that much problem with Ubisoft games. I haven't played a lot of Ubisoft games, but are they really that? Are they? I mean, yeah. There was that famous Assassin's Creed bug that's persisted across multiple games where some of the characters just don't have faces, so you get teeth and eyeballs. (laughs) That's the model. Nice. There you go. Welcome to a Halloween game. I I, I enjoy little bugs like that, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> like the it, um, I I don't want the nightmare fuel of that. Well, yeah. Well, early uh, early Rainbow Six Siege had that raptor legs bug. Did you see that one? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was fantastic. <laughs> oh man, that and all the I mean FIFA is just full of them. I've seen so many gifts of FIFA bugs and whatnot. There's been some Tarkov ones too. Okay. I've had attachments on my gun be just like no texture, just like a white shape. Um, <laughs> I've seen, I mean, there's been multiple times me and Rob have been playing and I'd be like, oh, this scav here has a backpack on him. And he'd be like, what scav? And I'd be like, oh, the, oh, one, the one standing right in front of me. And he's like, I, <laughs> there's nobody standing in front of you on my screen. <laughs> like, oh, oh, okay. I guess I haven't played enough to see any of yeah. these issues. Yeah. Like I've seen like a small handful, but mm-hmm. I'm I'm not anywhere near a Tarkov grinder. I mean I'd I'm be very much a I'd be willing to say any given day that I play Tarkov, I will see a bug of some sort. It might not be game breaking, but the, it you're gonna see bugs. It's just gonna happen. Okay. But that being said, it's still a fantastic game and it's gonna be on sale Monday if you wanna try it out. So uh, I played a I played a, a decent handful of games. So some Pavlov, some Half Life Two, some CS:GO, which I had an interesting issue with last night. So CS:GO, and this is like, I mean, granted, it's it's two in the morning, but on Steam, there's half a million people playing CS:GO. So it's like, oh, cool, lots of people playing. We get into a match. So I get into uh, like one of the less popular maps, and I I hit up deathmatch and put me into a server all by myself and a bunch of bots. I was like, ah, shit. This isn't what I wanted. All right, so let's go over here. All right, another deathmatch map. Yeah, there's there's two people. Like, it's me and one other guy. Mm. That, that was shitty. I'm like, okay, fine, fine. Let's do the most popular thing. We'll play casuals on Dust 2. There you go. Four people. Oh. Oh, oh. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Like, I wanted to play some Counter Strike last night, but not against brain dead bots. And there was <laughs> nobody there. Like, I don't know if they're yeah. having matchmaking issues or what, but like, it just weird. fucking disappeared. There was no one there. That's strange. And this is what? Which version of Counter Strike did you say? This is CS:GO. This is wow. The latest okay. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, the free they, one, right? Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Like one one of the one of the issues. I mean, at, granted, I'm using the um, like verified account thing, which means that people have to either pay for the game originally mm-hmm. or buy the pass to upgrade the account and add a phone number. Like it's it's a way to prevent cheaters. Yeah. Um, so I'm only matching against, yeah, you know, not the dregs of CS:GO society. Uh, but it's still like. There's a so massive CSGO, of people. I mean, CSGO has way too big of a player base to for that to have been your issue. That's yeah. weird. That's, it had to have been a, a bug or something. That's what I'm thinking. It was it was odd. Um so I that's one of the reasons why I like CSGO has this option. I just didn't check it last night. I love the server browser model sometimes. Like matchmaking is great, especially to make sure that you know, your lobbies aren't just, you know, everybody wrecking the one guy on the other team because mm-hmm. they're, you know, it's like a, a room full of grand champs playing against a, like a gold tail, right? That kind of stuff is, you know, somewhat avoided when you have a match made system. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but the uh I, what i really liked about old counter strikes is that by default when i said hey find a game it would just give me a list of fucking servers i'd be like yeah exclude full exclude uh empty show me how many people are playing sort by that and then give me the thing mm -hmm. give me just a big ass table let me double click something um and while you can do that in csgo a lot of people don't most people are just using the matchmaking yeah i i'd be honest i much prefer just a standard matchmaking menu than to go through a server browser really okay yeah, I, I mean i don't know i've it's just too like you got to make sure oh i got to filter out these modes and Oh, I got to find one that's populated and all oh, the ping on that one's kind of trash. It's like it, you, you do basically okay. all of the manual work that the matchmaking system would just do for you anyway. That's true. But if you're if you're searching for like custom modes and stuff like I get it. Yeah. Or if you're setting up a server to play with friends or something like that, I can see that too. Um, I mean, it's nice to have that option. But personally, I would rather just say, hey, I want to play CSGO matchmake. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a little distracted. I'm trying That's to right. find... Where's, where's the motherfucker that just posted that spam? I need to ban him. YK Washington 1152. There we go. There. Fuck. Bant. Okay. I got Feel kicked. the wrath of the hammer. I got kicked. You got kicked? Oh, from I got inactivity. Kicked from That's okay. Damn. We'll get you nah. back in. Nah. Actually, if you join um, on me, we still have that slot open in the oh, game. Oh, okay. Not join a party you're already in. I know. I'm afraid to join. <laughs> yeah. Do I have to send you an invite? No, I got it. Okay, we got it. Things are fine. Um, Get yeeted, spam chat guy. Uh, By the way, so if you I want to buy followers... <laughs> you want to buy followers... Go to the super the sketchy link and give them your credit card information. <laughs> Yeah, and then get banned don't forget, from Twitch for Don't Walmart. forget the expiration date and the three numbers on the back. <laughs> did I just score? How did I score that? Um, oh, so You're just bullshit. too good. You're too good at the game. <laughs> <laughs> um, so where so were we? <laughs> that was weird. Anyway, uh, I decided to play an old, old classic that uh, used to be a mainstay of 72 Pin Connector, and then mm -hmm. everybody just stopped playing it. Um, yeah. I decided to play some TF2. Oh, wow. It uh, was fucking great. Was it? Yeah. So uh, there's this cool project. Uh, Creators.tf is the website. Um, but you don't need the website because TF2 has a server browser. You just organize that shit by name. Look for creators.tf. And people have gotten really sick of Valve never updating TF2 because, mm -hmm. you know, it's an ancient game. Yeah. Uh, and they've got better things to do. Um but uh, they've taken on themselves through the power of mods and custom servers, adding in new game modes, new maps, new items, new cosmetics, new everything. Uh, so if you want like brand new TF2 content, the community has what you're looking for. It's really, really cool. Uh, so yeah, I, I played a bunch and TF2 is still uh, still a massive clusterfuck and it's a lot of fun. Well, yeah. I mean, how, what's the player base like now? Um, it's not awful. It yeah. should be, but it's not terrible. I mean, um, that game was huge for a while, so I yeah. could see, I could see some diehard fans definitely still playing it. And it was one of the the first big shooters to go free to play. Yeah. Um, which didn't help with cheaters and stuff like that, but you know, Valve eventually got around to taking care of that problem too, a little bit. It's still not great, but. Uh, Creators.tf, all those servers have pretty active mods, and I didn't see anyone cheating. I saw a bunch of That's spies backstabbing, but but nobody cheated. <laughs> no good dirty backstabbers. <laughs> you can't trust the spy. Agreed. So yeah, that was fun. I, I really, really enjoyed TF2. Um, so yeah, we, we should probably try that again sometime. That might we, be fun. We could. It, it would be, I don't know. I... I always kind of liked TF2, but I never really loved TF2. I don't know. No? No. I mean, it was fine. I I don't normally enjoy, like, class-based hero shooters. Which I know is 
not consistent with my love for Rainbow Six Siege exactly. <laughs> That's about to but say. <laughs> there's something about that because it's it the Rainbow Six it doesn't necessarily change the function of the shooting so much mm-hmm. as like an Overwatch or something like that does. Yeah. Um, most of the the character specific stuff revolves around gadgets. Yeah. Um, That's true. Which I guess like Valorant would probably fall under that category too. Mm. But I didn't play. I didn't play Valorant. I uh, I just find it funny how you know back in the day, people were were calling um, Overwatch Blizzard's TF2. They're like, so Blizzard TF2, and now everything gets compared to Overwatch because it you know yeah is so much more recently successful. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. It's easy to to just like generalize a game and fit it into a category of something else that's popular yeah like oh it's well i mean i guess <laughs> you you kind of did it too with with uh valorant <laughs> being uh cs go overwatch CS yeah, yeah CS overwatch although i don't but feel I, like I get valorant it though i mean really earned its stripes on its own mm-hmm. i guess not but, but yeah i think it might we'll have to see yeah um but have you um have you played any more Death Stranding since the last time we talked I about it? I haven't. Oh, I, no. I haven't. I wanted to, yeah. and I just I couldn't find the time to dedicate to it. That's fair. It's one of those games that could take a lot of time if you want to actually like complete yeah. it or whatever. Um, I was kind of I was kind of in the same boat this week. I I really wanted to play a bunch of it, but I didn't. <laughs> I played a little bit of it today, and that was about it. Um, I got up to like the, I think the last time we talked, I showed you that picture of the giant mountain and that <laughs> we were probably going to have to climb it at some point. Um, I got to a part where you get to a weather station, like not all the way up the mountain. It's like kind of at the base of the mountain, but mm. it's super cool. And I'm finding even what, like 16, 17 hours into the game. I'm still unlocking new systems and like stuff. Really? <laughs> yeah. Still? <laughs> like now all of a sudden, oh, I got the weather station. Now I can look at the map and see how the weather is going to be in certain <laughs> areas of the map so that I can avoid the time fall on certain deliveries if by going a different route and stuff. Huh. There is all kinds of just, there are so many systems and menus and stuff in that game. Uh, that is which, weird. Which, which I'm usually not into. Like I, I'm one of those people that I just like I don't care about all of these things. Yeah. Let me just you know like The Witcher Three. I don't care about the oils to put on my sword and the potions to make with the alchemy system <laughs> and the armor you, you buffs. Don't like the things that differentiates you know The Witcher from every I, other generic. Yeah. Thing. Actually. I literally okay, want to go it. up to the monster and mash square on my light attack, and that's it <laughs> until it's dead. Um, <laughs> but Death Stranding is... Uh, I mean, you can do that to a degree because traversal gets a little easier um, when you unlock some things later on. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of just stuff, and it takes forever. But it's still good. I don't know. I still like it. <laughs> Sounds like Death Stranding like to I, me. Yeah, like I got this a lot little... of stuff, and it takes forever. It does. I think take that was forever. a subtitle on, on the bottom Basically. of the box. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but I, I unlocked this little like cart thing I can pull around, uh, where I can put a bunch of cargo on this little cart, and it'll just like tether to my dude, and it just floats. Oh. It like floats off the ground. So even if you're going up a giant hill, it'll still just kind of float up there with you as long as you have the uh, like energy for it or whatever nice um, uh some vehicles make the game a lot easier sort of until you can't use them okay. anymore um such as you know like, like do they run out of like, gas or they run out of energy well there's a lot of stuff right so they run off batteries right so it's got to be charged um also if that time fall rain stuff is there some of them might just stop Oh working. shit! So you might be driving along, and then it's just like, oh nope, it doesn't work right here. You either have to wait on this to go to stop, or you can abandon your vehicle and you know, hoof it the rest of the way. Oh, damn. Um, 
So uh, no no windshield wipers. It's just like, nope, nope, sorry. Can't drive in the rain. <laughs> nope. This shuts it all down. Shut it all down. Um, but the biggest uh, quality of life thing so far that I've gotten is like this exoskeleton leg things. It like... Okay. You know how in the beginning of Forrest Gump, he got like that metal exoskeleton on his legs so that he could yeah. walk? It's like the futuristic version of that. So it drastically increases the weight limit and then drastically increases your general stability. So like hmm. you can load your dude down with cargo and stuff stacked, you know, way high above his head and still sprint like up a hill and stuff. It's fantastic. Yeah. So it kind of takes out a little bit of that like super careful traversing the land thing and changes Ooh. it into kind of just you know, hold the analog stick up and then occasionally hold your triggers down to stabilize yourself. But okay, it does make it easier and quicker. It, it, death Stranding is weird in that it's inherently tedious and annoying. <laughs> but like <laughs> you gradually, as you progress, you unlock things to make it a little less tedious and annoying while simultaneously yeah. they introduce more things and obstacles for you to deal with. <laughs> um, it it's It's another one of those games that it's hard to make it sound enjoyable, but I still yeah. enjoy it. I don't know. I don't know if I can describe it exactly, but there's something there that I enjoy. So, um, is, I completely lost what I was going to say. Damn it. I hate <laughs> it when that happens. Uh, I had a really good question. Oh man. You'll, cu you'll I think of it later when it's completely off topic. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll think of it like right before I go to bed tonight. I'd be like, oh, yeah. damn it. Ah, um, just send it to yeah. me in a Discord message. <laughs> Maybe we'll talk um, about it next week. Yeah, I, I need to get back to Death Stranding. Uh, and I, I just haven't. Like, I've got to be in a certain mood to play that game. Exactly. Because, yeah. like, I want to... It's one of those games where I want to try to do good. But at the same time, it's not a game where... I want to feel particularly tryhardy. Like if that makes any mm -hmm. sense, like because it's a single player narrative driven walking simulator, mm -hmm. like I want to veg out while playing it. But at the same time, I don't want to be bad at the game. So I actually want to try and give a shit. Mm -hmm. And those two moods rarely meet up in that middle point for me. Yeah. That's like true. it's, it's a weird thing. You I'm can... very much a mood driven gamer. Yeah, for sure. I am too. That's why I basically never finish anything ever. <laughs> because <laughs> my, yeah, I'm either just not in the mood or something else catches my interest. I swear or I have like... Or the thing you want to play satiates you like e an hour and you never get back to it. Yeah, it's just gamer ADHD or whatever. I basically yeah. have that. So, um, yeah. So I, I played a, uh, a custom Half-Life Alex map that I really really should should stream more of um i streamed it a little bit mr business watched um he I, I think mr business enjoyed it when i was streaming it i didn't enjoy it i hated every second uh i played the pt map oh, oh. and uh oh yeah so how well did they recreate that um it's not great okay. um they're missing like a lot of the textures are very much asset lifts from half-life alex yeah. um the very small amount of custom scripting makes you think hey is this thing broken or am i just not doing something right until something mm. happens after a time gate um oh. like most of the objects like the stuff on the tables are non-interactable there's there's a lot to dislike about the pt map the one thing it gets right and i i kind of think Horror games in VR are playing on like with cheat codes. They've got a Game Shark automatically. It's easy mode, built yeah. Easy yeah. mode. With that like, level hey, of natural you... immersion, you're yeah. like halfway there to <laughs> scarcity already. Do you do you want to freak out the player? Cool. Put in some sound effects. All right. <laughs> they're fun. They're Flash an image for a second. Yeah. Perfect. Excellent. Because Good it's, job. It's not like like, you step back, you're like, okay, it's cool. I don't have to be afraid of Rocket League. Like, I know there's another monitor here. I can look around. I'll look. The mm -hmm. sun's shining. In VR, it's just like, no, nah, dog, I can't get away. I'm <laughs> you're inside. there, and you have to look at it. 
You can close oh your God. eyes, but as soon as you open them. <laughs> it's still fucking there. <laughs> uh, so the, the game got to a part where there was a, uh, like, um, what looked to be a zombie-like creature. Like, it, it didn't look like custom geometry. It might have been. Uh, but yeah. it looked like a standard Half-Life Alex zombie, except it was kind of far away, and the lighting was really good at making the scene spooky. And then there was, like, a sound effect, and the lights turned off. And you had to walk forward past it. Oh. <laughs> and I said, nah, dog. I'm I, I'm a head out. <laughs> I just, I noped the fuck out of there oh, so man. fast. I was just like, you know, I, I hate to do this on stream, but I don't really feel like doing this right now. <laughs> it's like, it's like, I don't know, late in the evening. No one's awake. Yeah. I'm alone playing PT and VR. That, <laughs> nah. That's a recipe for disaster. Those three <laughs> sentences. <laughs> yeah uh, I'm, I'm out dude thanks that being said so, that that is kind of the the ideal environment to yeah get the most out of a game like that um on on a side note uh if you're thinking about getting a mustache don't because this this is awful like everything is just itchy and it's too long and i need to trim this mustache so i i apologize with the I, face touch i hear you just i do that going. a lot all day long uh, which is yeah so uh, yeah, the PT map, um, it's, it's definitely like technically it is not very well built. And mm -hmm. especially if you watch like somebody play through it on a, on a 2D screen, it's just like, yeah. why are they getting scared? This looks like it sucks. And it does. That's but inside consistent of VR, with... it's totally different. Yeah. I mean, there's been a handful of PT remakes and mods and stuff, mm -hmm. and most of them aren't great. Yeah. So it's kind of to be expected, but... Yeah, so uh, if, if you do have Half-Life Alex, I can recommend downloading that custom map, especially if you like spooky things. You would get spooked. Is it spooky? Plenty spook, spooky. Spook spooky. Uh, what's, what's worse? What's the worst? Is that because of the audio being as good as it is in most VR titles, you know how in PT, when you walk through the, the door, it slams behind you? Yeah. Even if you know it's coming, you're just it's like, still damn. still startles you. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> fucking fuck and you look back you're like oh look it's a closed door mm -hmm. fucking fuck why did it slam and it's yeah. that way the entire game wow so i might get back and finish it yeah one of these years not really looking forward to it though <laughs> horror games are in inherently kind of masochistic in a way <laughs> yeah like fe fear is not a pleasant sensation I can't call it fun. Like Silent no. Hill 2, it's not a fun game. Do I love it? Hell fucking yes. yes. Did I have fun? No. No. <laughs> not at all. Do, do, I, do I get great joy out of playing Amnesia, The Dark Descent? Mm -hmm. Joy, no. no. Joy is Immersion? Not the yes. Yes. But it, it's... I, I had a conversation with a friend about this lately, or recently, because he mentioned that he doesn't understand horror movies mm -hmm. he doesn't like any of them he doesn't get the appeal like why would you want to fear to feel fear in a medium in which you're supposed to be you know enjoy what you're doing right you're supposed to like mm -hmm. the movie um and i i kind of equated it to sort of like spicy food right the feeling yeah. of your mouth being on fire is not inherently pleasant but it's the yeah. fact that it's uh, it's an interesting. It, it adds a layer of complexity and like an interesting quality to something. Um, yeah, it's different. Yeah, it's 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 a novel experience, and it's you're feeling something like that in the context in which it is not at all harmful or threatening to you. Yeah. So you get to experience fear in a situation where your life is not in any kind of danger whatsoever. Yeah, uh, you get to experience the feeling of pepper setting your mouth on fire without actually burning anything. <laughs> so it's it's one of the reasons. Um, well, so this this map did two things really well, like the the general horror aspects and the the jump scares and the spookiness worked really well. But the thing that was surprising to me is just the tension. Everything mm. is tense. Like, you're in that game, and nothing is happening. You're just walking through, 
a relatively brightly lit hallway with yeah. some rain sounds outside. Like yep. it's literally just like think about thunderstorms when you're a kid. It's literally just that, and you're walking through your fucking foyer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but for some reason, because you know it's supposed to be spooky, you're just yeah. all yep. tensed up. And as soon as you take off that mask, you're like, oh my god, I feel fucking exhausted. <laughs> because it's your the... entire body has been ready to like kill yeah. something for an hour. It's the perfect example of them just setting just enough pieces there to let you scare yourself. Yeah. And oh my god, it does it so yeah. fucking well. <laughs> I'm still so disappointed that that didn't really become anything. Yeah, same. Uh, although rumor has it that uh, Kojima might be looking at doing a horror game next. I, I mean, you know, I, know I, it's saw, I saw some rumor right? stuff and I saw some, uh, hey, uh, this isn't actually happening. Aww. Confirmation kind of stuff. <laughs> Shit. Um, so I don't, I don't know. You know, all that kind of stuff is always up in the air. You never know. But one positive thing that came from it is even if even if we don't get that game, that existing and being such a phenomenon influences other developers. So, well, I mean, PT alone is basically responsible for the creation of Resident Evil Seven. Resident Evil Seven yeah. was literally they yeah. said, "Hey, how did PT do this? Cool, can we <laughs> copy that shit?" And they did. Yeah, I remember playing that first. Uh, it's not actually part of Resident Evil Seven, but that like teaser demo thing they came out with before Resident Evil Seven came out, and it was very heavily PT influenced. And you could see it all the way yeah. down to, you know, releasing a playable teaser of your upcoming game. I really wish that more horror games would take this and control does this a little bit, but take like the weirdness of a situation or something just being slightly out of place or just something not right where it's not necessarily just horror, right? Like it's not spooky monsters and jump scares all day but you know something just isn't correct mm -hmm. like sort of that x files bend or twin peaks like just something's something squidgy here man <laughs> i don't like this it's squidgy is the best word i have to describe that i've never heard that word in my entire life it's squidgy S squidgy is that a yeah. real word or did you just make uh, it up? i don't know i use squidgy a lot like okay. if you make a bowl of spaghetti like don't put sauce in it and just squish put your hands in there and like that's grab squidgy. it that's that's how squidgy is <laughs> that's the I, I just defined it that's the new word squidgy um it makes me think of squeegee <laughs> a squidgy squeegee it's a uh, squeegee made out of loose pasta mm, no thanks <laughs> moving on <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I wish more horror games would um, would embrace that thing. Like the time loop, or maybe not even time loop, but the area loop of PT was mm -hmm. really interesting because you had to figure out how to progress the game in a world that didn't make logical sense. And I wish that more games leaned in hard to that. Like Control did a lot of that with the the light switches, right? Where you're yeah. just like, all right, let me let me pull this thing three times. What the fuck just happened? Oh, okay. Now now the room is orange. Oh, now the room is blue. And I'm in this random hotel. Okay. Yeah. Like, <laughs> wait a minute. Why do I have a key here? Okay, everything's on the ceiling now. This is kind of weird. Um, I wish more horror games would lean into the absurdist aspect of level design and concept. Mm -hmm. uh, that, to me, that's one of the things that really amps up a horror game because... Not only is the environment scary, not only are the things you're facing scary, mm -hmm. but now you have broken the logic of reality. Now yeah. you know that this world does not play by the same rules that you are used to. Mm -hmm. This world is operating under its own foundation, and you can't really expect anything. Yeah. Remember the game Antimatter? Yes. I want horror Antimatter. <laughs> yes. Oh my god, that would be so fucking good. But yeah, but yeah, I completely agree with you that that kind of I guess it's a psychological aspect, like a psychological like psychological horror aspect of mm -hmm. things just not being correct, um, yeah. even if it's not overtly horror. Yeah, kind of like like there are certain episodes of the X-Files which were terrifying, but the things on the screen taken at face value mm -hmm. didn't make the scene scary. What made it yeah. scary is that. The world did not operate in the way you thought it did. Mm -hmm. And that was the horrifying part. Yeah. 
I'm sure there are some games that utilize that. I just can't think of anything off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, but if anybody is listening and knows of games like that, please let us know. We would love to check them out. I'm always looking for... Um, I haven't played a horror game in a while. And I feel like I'm overdue. I feel like I'm ready to, to try another one. Ooh. I'm trying to think of the last one I played. The last one I played was Resident Evil 3, the new remake. And I bounced oh, off yeah. that really quick. Yeah. Like, whereas the police station in Resident Evil 2 really grabbed me. I love the environment, the pacing, everything about it. Resident Evil 3 felt very um, generic and action gamey to me, which is yeah. exactly how Resident Evil 3 is supposed to feel. I say not, that's not necessarily just, that it's badly done. It's just that it's just it's not a the game that you want. Style. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, it didn't give me what I was craving. I wanted mm. more Resident Evil 2. That's which fair. I guess I could just I think, play all the DLC or play through the campaigns again. Uh, yeah, that too. Um, so... You mentioned control, and I have to remind you of the the sequence that I wanted you to experience. Oh yeah, the cool segment. It kind of goes along with what you were saying, uh, wanting horror games like when something is just the weirdness of the world. Um, it's not scary at all. It's like it's that, but in the fun version. <laughs> okay. Um, you need to watch the ashtray maze section of the game if you're not going to cool. play through it. Okay. It was just one of the coolest sequences I've played in a while. It was just neat. <laughs> I think you would really, really like it. And I, I don't want to spoil anything about Half-Life A Alex, but it mm -hmm. does have a segment that is is similar to the things that I'm talking about, like where I'm where I'm craving that. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it gave me those exact same feelings. Yeah. Uh, and I I think like honestly, it is in my top five favorite video game levels of all time, bar none, not even an exaggeration. Okay. Um, I, I think... Is there, a, is there a name to the segment that wouldn't give it away? Or that wouldn't give it away what it is? Uh, even the name is a little bit of a spoiler. Hmm. Um, if you know Half-Life history. Okay. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Anyone who has played through the game already knows what I'm talking about. If you haven't, and you're never gonna play Half Life, Alex. Feel free to watch a playthrough. You'll you'll know when you'll you'll know when the segment starts. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's I, I played through that so that I will I will be I will fully admit this on a podcast. Oh yeah. When I first played through that, the very first time beating the game, had no idea what was happening. I might have been under the influence a wee bit because I was sitting <laughs> here, I was playing games having a few drinks i was like i don't think there's that much left in half-life alex i can i can do this so i got mm -hmm. up i played it and it blew my fucking mind out the back of my head <laughs> it was in fucking sane everything in that ending was perfect uh so yeah it was i i have like tried to get people to play through Half-Life Alex who have VR headsets just uh -huh. so I can talk to them about this one level and Jeff. Those are the two Jeff things was, I want to talk Jeff about. Jeff was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and apparently there are some custom maps that are using Jeff in fun and interesting ways that I have yet to try out, but it's on my list. Hmm. So yeah. Also, it's, uh, it should be interesting. I love how Half-Life Alex has become the new podcast Dark Souls in Rocket League. Hell yeah. <laughs> of course it is it's so good we're gonna have to make uh, the a meme now or an emote are. or something <laughs> i i wouldn't mind a, a half-life alex emote half-life alex is the best strand type game i've played since bubsy 3d agreed <laughs> uh so other strand type games i've been playing are uh beat saber i'm oh, sitting more nice. records still haven't beat saeed but yeah. uh uh, we found, holy shit. Did you watch that movie that was in, uh, or the video that was in general chat last um, night that Bert posted? Which one was it? Uh, it was Beat Saber so. and the somebody had full body tracking and the character was like this uh, tiny anime girl playing <laughs> um, a uh, a song from the Doom soundtrack from Doom 2016. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, which, I think it's like at it? Doom's Gates or something oh, like that. Oh, yeah. Like the it's the intro basically. Okay. Um. So, 
the map. But Bird found it last night when searching through recent maps in Beat Saber. Now, mm -hmm. searching through recent maps is like searching new on a social media platform. You are only going to get absolute dog shit 99% <laughs> of the time. There yeah. is nothing redeeming about going to the new section of anything. Reddit, Twitter, doesn't matter. It's all fucking trash fire. Um, so Bird found this map. He's like, hey, it's a Doom map. It's got decent ratings. Um, you want to... You want to try it? I was like, yeah, all right. I mean, I've never played a good Doom map in Beat Saber. Yeah. For some reason, nobody seems to be able to map these things correctly. Uh, so I, I begrudgingly tried it. I was like, all right, this, this is my last one before I go to bed. The map was so good that I went for an extra half an hour. Oh, um, okay. It had, we got into the map, and everything is just pure yellow, which is really weird. It, it just, it looked broken. And there's like weird, like, craggly textures above me and weird custom geometry. I'm like, what the fuck? And the map actually gets going and it transports like beneath my feet. Like apparently I spawned below the stage Oh, <laughs> and it starts moving forward and it's like I'm going down a hill. Like the whole level is moving and you're like going on this journey. As the song progresses, you realize, yeah, it's all like lava, fire, brimstone. You are walking down into hell oh my and god as the song progresses like there's like fucking pentagrams and shit and there's like like these weird fucking satanic looking buildings none of the <laughs> notes are normal like they uh -huh. they're evil notes and they they don't even line up to the grid system like they're completely like some notes are like inside of each other but going at a weird angle mm -hmm. it is so fucking weird at the end of the map it brings you to this tower and I looked up, and there's this giant ass red pentagram into the ceiling, beaming down. They at me. went all in on this, didn't they? Oh my <laughs> fucking god! I freaked the fuck out. And what was great is I'm freaking the fuck out. Bird is freaking the fuck out. Everybody in the chat, like watching me beat Saber, is freaking the fuck out because of this map and how well it was done. Bar none, the absolute best beat Saber map I have ever played, ever number one spot wow it was okay amazing. i'm gonna have to, i definitely need to watch that video now you gotta see that video it is nuts now the video that was posted has the third person view which isn't super interesting mm -hmm. and the first person view which is better okay um i'll also probably be playing this tonight because i'm gonna beat saber some more tonight uh and you can see it firsthand um fantastic yeah it's oh my fucking god they also did cyber demon and they used the walls. Like, it wasn't as good, but it was mm -hmm. pretty good. They used the walls to create pentagrams that you fly through. Mm -hmm. And then, like, the number 666 will stream by you before it gets into a hard part of the song. <laughs> it's really fucking cool. This mapper... This mapper is one hell of a mapper. Uh, mm. By far my favorite. I actually went through and I said, Hey, uh, Beat Saver, show me everything Every this guy did. <laughs> yeah. And I just downloaded it all. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll take Fantastic. all of that. Yep, all it doesn't that, look please. like the other. Yeah, it doesn't look like the other maps have the same level of dedication. Only the Doom maps, <laughs> which makes perfect sense. Yeah, it's a super cannot fan. cannot be mad at that. Yes, don't let the churches see this one. Video games would be on the list again. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, it was so fucking good. Um, also, the the video in general chat shows you know the the sword in the new Doom game, like the the Doom Slayer's big ass. Mm -hmm. So they can just beat to death demons. Yeah. Apparently, you can get those as the sabers in a mod. Oh, so uh, I'm gonna need to play this game or this map again yeah. Yeah. with the Doom sabers. You're contractually obligated. I am. Oh, it was so fucking good. I, I now I just get, I want to quit Rocket League. I want to go play that. <laughs> I'm sorry, we can't do Beat Saber podcast. I don't think that would Why not? that would work out too well. That'd be fine. It'd be like, oh, uh, yeah, uh, next, I played next uh, a game in news. <laughs> Played Next Half-Life <laughs> played Half Life uh, Alex for the four thousandth time this week. Oh fuck, hang on. <laughs> oh shit. Oh fuck. Okay, so there's a PT hat. <laughs> That'd be the oh, whole man. stream. It'd be off the rails for sure. <laughs> As if we needed more of that. Yeah. So um I I didn't really get any other games in this week. I mean I did some no? rock, I did some Rocket League today. Uh speaking of Rocket League, a little early on the the news segment but rlcs x started today the eu regional first um what are they calling them wave whatever it's called split 
the first uh, split was today. Um, I didn't get a chance to see much of it, so I don't know all the results and all the cool stuff. But um, RLCS is back. Ready for a new season, see how things go. Hopefully the team does well. I'm looking forward to this. This is yeah. going to be nice. The new format's exciting. Like it, it's it's cool that they really switched it up this this season. So we'll see how that yeah. plays out. Hopefully it works out better for everybody. Hopefully everybody likes it. I'm um, looking forward to seeing more of it. But yeah, that's a I played some Rocket League, played some Death Stranding, I played a lot of Tarkov and that was my whole week. Is Tarkov a strand type game? Uh it's kind of a hybrid. It's like a a strand type MMO shooter. Oh my god. Uh, my headphones thing. have completely disconnected. Oh no. There we go. Tom right, can't I'm hear back. me. All right. So anyway, is Tarkov a strand type game? Yeah, Tarkov is well, it's kind of like a hybrid strand type uh racing flight simulator. Okay. Um Yeah. Adult visual novel. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm only going to play <laughs> strand type games now. Uh, I love the strand type game meme. <laughs> um, oh, fuck. I was trying to save that and I own gold. What a save. What a save. Nice shot. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. So, uh, uh, Oh, uh, Fisty is asking, what is a strand type game? Well, if we had to tell you, you'll never know. <laughs> uh, so when Death Stranding, <laughs> before Death Stranding came out and uh, Kojima was talking about the game, he referred to it as the first strand type game, which was a just nutty, <laughs> weird it's, thing to say. This game has really fucking weird gameplay the theme like he's <laughs> a big part of the theme of the game is connection and making connections with other players and that is reflected in the multiplayer gameplay in which players can help each other with uh in-game things without actually seeing each other in game but he had to say it's the first strand type game like strand is a connection and you know blah 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 blah, blah it's super artsy stuff listen it yeah. just it just means that it's and it's not even the first game to do that necessarily. No. Like <laughs> asynchronous multiplayer is a thing that already exists, but you know, it, it, it became a meme for a strand type game. Yeah. And then video game so Rocket- started calling everything that and <laughs> it, it became a thing. It's funny. Rocket League is not a strand type game. No. Um, so I, I played... See, I'm looking at my games list. Uh, I spared no expense and decided to play uh, last weekend a bit more of Jurassic World Evolution. Ah. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, the only downside is, yeah, a bunch of people got eaten because uh, I built a yeah. really cheap fence and put a carnivore in there. And... Oh, you can't put the carnivore in a cheap yeah, fence. I know. You I clearly did. spared the expense. I, I mean, I didn't really have expense to spare, so... Yeah, I, I kind of spared the expense. Um, <laughs> Rule number one of Jurassic Park. <laughs> spare no expense. <laughs> For the love of God, Tom. Did you even watch it the was, first movie? Uh, I mean, yeah, a little bit. I, I think I fell asleep at a couple parts where he was explaining about the <laughs> expenses being spared. Um, <laughs> and only hiring one fucking IT guy to run oh a fucking God. theme park. Jesus Christ, man. Like, I know it's the 90s. And but... Newman, of all people. Right? Um, so, yeah, I, I like that game. I haven't gotten too far into the campaign yet. I have unlocked two new islands. One of them is really cool, though, because after you get through and you know do some stuff in the single player, it says, hey, um, if you just want to dick around and build like your favorite Jurassic Park, go to this island, and you've got unlimited money. Like, just oh. fucking enjoy it. Nice. Which is really cool. That's an actual game mode. Like, no cheat codes, no nothing, just... That's pretty cool. Here you go. Um, and, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to build uh, Jurassic Park when I get yes. it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking forward to this. It's, it's a really nice game, and I like it so far. I think any game like that should have the sort of no restrictions sandbox mode. Yeah, for sure. Um, the last game that I played, and I've only played probably about an hour of it today, right before the show, 
is The Legend of Zelda, The Missing Link. And if you've never heard of that game, it's because it doesn't actually exist. It's not a real game. Uh, it's a ROM hack. So what a ROM hack is, basically somebody takes an existing game and they use the assets in that game, or sometimes they create new assets and make completely new games out of that base package. They're using like an existing game as a game engine to build new stuff out of. So they take Ocarina of Time in this case, they make new dungeons, new overworlds, puzzles, sometimes enemies, textures, music, whatever. And they release this patch file and they say, hey, go ahead and like apply this thing on top of this thing. And, and there you go. There's a brand new game. So it's quite literally like a sequel, a sequel to Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask, but totally new content that nobody's ever played before. Um, so yeah, The Missing Link so far, it's really good. It's set between the events of Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. Okay. Uh, it's a non-canon fan game, basically. Uh, but I'm having a lot of fun with it. The music is well done. The, there's a, a bunch of custom stuff. There's an interesting like sword beam mechanic that was in Ocarina of Time originally, but got taken out before they launched. Um, they do a lot of cool stuff with that. Uh, it's a lot, of, a lot of cool puzzle work. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was, it's fun. It's always nice um, to see a which, fan made thing be actually like a nice high quality. Yeah. Because so, 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 so many link, fan mods and stuff are rough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the majority of ROM hacks or stuff like that mm -hmm. are not great. Right? Like the majority of anything is not great. <laughs> um, Especially 2020. But yeah. Uh, so, oh my God, how did we both miss that? That was amazing. Um, sorry. Um, so yeah, the, the Missing Link isn't a, uh, a super long game, mm -hmm. or it's not supposed to be, uh, but the atmosphere, the level design so far, I'm impressed with it. It looks really nice. If you want something longer, there's actually another ROM hack that just released called... There it is. Uh, the Legend of Zelda, uh, The Master of Time. And it's supposed to be the missing third game of the Zelda 64 trilogy. So you had Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and then uh, nothing. Because Nintendo's like, these things take a while to make. Let's just make it on the GameCube. Which turned out great. Um, but somebody's like, hey, we, we want a continuation of that story. Here's a fan game. And from what I've seen from streamers playing it, some of the bigger Zelda speedrunners are, are going through it. Um, is that the game itself looks really cool. There's a lot of content in there, a whole lot of new stuff, brand new overworld, eight dungeons. It looks really fucking cool. The only issue I have with it is that they really needed a fucking copy editor. Like some of that dialogue is either oh, no. cheesy and bad or just rough. Um, and it, it doesn't ruin the game, but when you're when you're playing Zelda, which is like a story driven action RPG, you don't want the writing to be a weak spot. Mm -hmm. uh, now, that said, it's a it's a, a fan made patch. It's not like they printed cartridges. They can absolutely fix this later. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to more patches to, to come out for this thing. Um, but yeah, so far, Nintendo hasn't taken it down. I wouldn't be surprised if they do. It's in a legal gray area. Um, because while the original content isn't Nintendo's to take down, because it's kind of based or applied to their IP and uses Ocarina of Time as kind of its um, advertising model, saying, hey, here's more of this game from a, you know, random developer that you love. It's, it's weird. It's an illegal, legally gray area. Yeah. So, um can't officially yeah. condone downloading and playing it but if you, know. you download the patches there is nothing legally wrong with that if you download the ocarina of time rom you're committing copyright infringement keep that in mind if you download the rom of ocarina of time with the patch applied that's also copyright infringement so you can't say that motherfuckers <laughs> um <laughs> You, you can't just cheat the system like that. No, I didn't download the ROM. I downloaded the ROM with the patch applied. So it's different. No, it's it's not. That's copyright infringement still. Um, so I've been playing it because, whoops, copyright infringement. Whoops. Um, haven't tried Master of Time yet. I'm going to. It's on my list. And mm -hmm. what's great is that 
Like, I love that era of games. I love the Nintendo 64 Zelda titles. They're some of my favorite games of all time. Uh, and I get more. That's it. I just wanted more. And now I get, get it. it. Yeah. It's great. Thanks, fans. But yeah, that's that's all I have played this week. Wow. Oh. Fantastic. Um, I guess we should get to the news. Yeah. So I... This first one, I wish Eric was here this podcast because this is this is his bread and butter. This mm. is his one of his uh, you know longtime favorite series, Halo Infinite. Uh, the multiplayer is going to be free to play, which I did not see coming, and I think that's fantastic. That's really weird to me. That's I mean, really weird to me. I I can kind of see it because. Halo is not exactly currently at its peak, right? Yeah. So I think they need something to change it up. And I think offering the multiplayer is free to play and then selling the main game, like the the campaign, which is a big part of the Halo series. You know, it's not, it's not like Call of Duty where it's basically multiplayer and then they threw in a Ooh. campaign once in a while. Um, it's actually pretty campaign focused, but... Yeah. Um I like the I like the change to free to play. It's gonna give, you know, a lot of people access to the game that wouldn't normally and hopefully make some new Halo fans out of it. That would be cool. Hopefully, um with any free to play game you run into the issue of cheating and cheaters yeah. being a problem in hackers. Hopefully they can deal with that okay. That would be my only real worry. Mm. Um that and obviously the I'm I'm hoping all of the microtransaction stuff is just cosmetic, which I'm assuming yeah. it will be. I mean, at this point, free to play game 101. If you don't want to make your fans angry, make sure all of the microtransactions are I don't know cosmetic, <laughs> not don't, gameplay don't be affecting. World of Tanks. Where World of Tanks? Somebody oh, who pays was, some money. We literally had that the was entire egregious. podcast crew. That was absolutely <laughs> egregious. We had Adam and me and Irk and Josh all firing on this one tank who decided to spend like 10 real world dollars on some, some ammo and armor. And we couldn't do like more than literally a few zero damage. damage. To him. Yeah. Yeah. Just couldn't, couldn't take him down. And he literally, he was sitting there. Like he wasn't shooting at us. Just like, yep. Oh, is that a fly? Oh, yeah, that's oh, a fly. Sorry. It's gotta be a fly. Oh, what was I doing? Oh yes. Murder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, um, that was awful in every way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely don't see them doing anything like that. <laughs> um, the, the other part of this that's exciting is that the game will run at up to 120 FPS on the Xbox Series X. Uh, that's yeah, cool. that's really neat. Um, now, I wonder, because a lot of these cheaper HDTVs, like, it's a really cool feature for the people who know about it or care about it, mm -hmm. but... Will the majority of console players actually get to see this thing? I I hope so. I don't know. Is yeah. is I mean, buying it's, is it's buying cool like a there. is buying like a nice computer monitor popular with console gamers that want you know better I guess input lag and stuff like that? Like that's a that's um, a thing, right? You know, I couldn't tell you. I don't know. I mean, I can't imagine that because there are like high level Call of Duty players that play on console only, right? Mm -hmm. I can't imagine those people playing on just like regular old TVs with <laughs> the giant input lag associated with that, even uh, when you turn on like the game mode and all turn off yeah, all the extra visual features. I mean, I can imagine that the, you know, regular PC computer monitor market still applies to consoles. Maybe not nearly to the extent that it does on PC, obviously, but yeah, there's got to be a market there. And hopefully those people enjoy the 120 frames per second on Halo. Yeah, that'd be cool. So that one's pretty cool. Uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 soundtrack adds 37 new songs and restores two songs from the, the classic games that were previously unconfirmed from the soundtrack. That's awesome. I, I hope these new yeah. songs fit in well with the old ones. The The soundtrack of the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater games has always been huge as far as um, just the vibe of skating. Like, it, it just adds so Ooh. much. The soundtracks are awesome. 
So hopefully these new songs fit in. I looked at the artist list. Honestly, I didn't recognize most of the names, but uh, I'm, you know, the st- the style of music in the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater games isn't necessarily the style of music I'm most familiar with. Yeah. But um but no, hopefully those new songs fit well with the old ones and everybody will enjoy the soundtrack as much as we did when we played the the original two games. The Tony Hawk soundtracks to me are condensed nostalgia. Like <laughs> Yeah. Anytime I'm playing those games and like every time I play Superman in Beat Saber, like uh-huh. I am, I am a kid. It is 1990 fucking nine. I've mm. got my Sega Dreamcast and I'm just, I'm grinding. I've got, uh, this is before the manual, but I'm grinding. I'm, I've got the, you know, all the special moves memorized for every single character. Mm-hmm. Tony Hawk was so weird. Cause they said, Hey, what if we mixed a fighting game, like fighting game mechanics into a skateboarding game? You're like, wait, what? Yeah, combos, combos and special moves, baby. dude. It's like, uh, <laughs> what the fuck are you guys doing? And it was like the biggest shit ever. Yeah. Remember when every single game that came out was a Tony Hawk ripoff? Oh, man. Those, those I remember, were simpler times. I remember playing a Razor Scooter, like yep, Tony Hawk I style game. <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> there, was mul- there were multiple BMX uh, versions of that. There, were, there was a surfing game. Yeah, Kelly, Kelly Slater's, Kelly Slater's pro, surfer. pro Surfer, yeah. Uh, obviously, snowboarding. I mean, there was there was a lot. What was that one that was... It wasn't exactly like that, but you could choose whether you wanted to play as a skateboarder or a BMX or... Oh, uh, There was shit. a third one. Maybe like a rollerblader or something. I Yeah, I remember kind of what you're talking about. I just like, I can't place the name. Like Three Extreme or something like that? It was something that sounded horribly generic. <laughs> yeah. Um, did you ever play uh, on on the N sixty four? That's it's automatically probably, gonna probably no. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. say just gonna go ahead and say no. But go ahead and continue. <laughs> um, so before Tony Hawk, there was this snowboarding game that came out, uh, developed and published by Nintendo. I think I think it was developed by them. Anyway, um, but it kind of had only the fighting game combos like it wasn't as smooth or easy to get used to as tony hawk Mm -hmm. but it was called uh 1080 and it was a badass snowboarding game with a lot of unlockable characters secret tracks stuff like that it was a really good game the issue is like a year or so after 1080 came out or maybe it was two years tony hawk released it's just like oh this is how you do this type of game (laughs) it's like you play 1080 and you're like oh shit is this how things were before tony hawk and I legitimately loved that game. Like I put a couple hundred hours into it and got pretty good. Uh-huh. But it was comparing the two. It's fucking rough. It's comparing GoldenEye 64 <laughs> to Halo. That's how much of a difference Tony Hawk made in that style of game. Uh, 1080 rings a bell. I don't know that I really played it. I played a lot of Cool Borders, though. The, <laughs> P- the PlayStation version, because I was yep. a PlayStation boy back then. Um, I played a lot of cool borders. I played, uh, was it Sean Palmer's pro snowboarder on yep. Dreamcast? I played that a lot. Was was 1080 ever on? I didn't realize that was a Nintendo thing because I remember 1080 yeah. existing, but I, I guess my brain thought of it as like a a non console specific game. Yeah, it was it was Nintendo uh, specifically okay. because the Fair enough. I want to say. Thank you, Josh, for the hydration. Oh, yes. Stay hydrated out there. Cheers. I want to say the sequel to 1080 Snowboarding was on the GameCube. And that sequel maybe that's was what I'm not thinking very of. good. Oh, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. I guess I didn't, was, I didn't um, remember. Like, I remember 1080 existing, but I didn't remember it existing that early. So maybe I'm thinking yeah. of the sequel or something. Yeah, the sequel was not very well received. They said, hey, uh, if you want one of these games, just play fucking Tony Hawk. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, shit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so it just died. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Steam bans adult visual novel months after release raising censor- censorship-, censorship fears. Yeah. So uh, this story came out because the publisher's like, 
we went through this whole thing. We got approved. Like, Steam, what the fuck? Are you going to get rid of your adult section on the store? Mm -hmm. Which is hidden by default. If you have a Steam account, you're probably not seeing a bunch of games because they hide that stuff because mm -hmm. they don't, like, want somebody going to, like, the Steam website and be like, what the fuck? Okay, that's clearly adult material. Yeah. Uh, so they hide it unless you opt into that content. Um, and they said, hey, if you've got adult content, you know, just mark it as such and uh, people can buy it. Uh, which, you know, for the game developers who publish those games and the people that play them, that's great. You no longer have to go to weird, shady websites and throw in a credit card or your PayPal information. You just buy it on the platform that you buy everything else on. Uh, and, you know, friends list be damned. Uh, you can now play those games with the rest of your Steam library. So when this got banned, the publisher was like, oh, look, they're going to start locking stuff down again. Some parents got mad, I'm sure. And Valve came out and said, nah, actually, the reason we got that is because it turns out that one of the characters that is 17, through an official patch from the publisher, you can add in um, adult content to that character. And that goes 100% oh. against our acceptable content use. Uh, okay. So yeah, your your game is banned. So uh, fuck off, guy. I uh, I can't. I am never yeah. going to disagree with that <laughs> at all. They uh, did the exact right thing. There's no censorship here. It is literally Steam blocking illegal content. And they the publisher came back and said, but but no no, it's cool because you're not selling that content. They have to buy a patch from us to enable it. And Steam is like, no dog. Uh, <laughs> if you're going to have that in your game at all you cannot have it on our platform which is 100 percent the right call to make yeah <laughs> yeah Ooh. so uh Ooh. yeah if, if, if you had any controversy about Ooh. steam censoring things nah uh, seems it's just not trying yeah. to enable child porn so uh yeah fuck off weird game publisher mm. Mm. that was moving that was on awesome. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Hmm. uh yeah sega president Kenji Matsubara resigns. Yep. So we don't really have much information at all. Um, and one of the most common reasons for resignation in Japan is I'm leaving for personal reasons. And that is exactly what happened here. So mm -hmm. not sure what's going on. Maybe they're going to a different company. Maybe he's got health stuff. Maybe he's taking time off to spend with family. We don't know. But yeah. Be literally anything. Yeah. Resigned. Well, hopefully everything is cool, and hopefully everybody, you know, comes out ahead on it. Yeah. Well, let's see. Oh, yes. Uh, so, Cyberpunk 2077, CD Projekt Red, uh, put out a tweet, and we figured that it'd be a good PSA uh, for listeners of the 72-Pin Connector podcast. If somebody offers you beta keys for Cyberpunk 2077, they're not real. It's a scam. There is no beta. You know, for for not public beta anyway, for Cyberpunk 2077, don't get scammed, don't get your shit hijacked. You know, buy the game when it comes out. So don't don't listen to the scammers. There is no beta that you can participate in for Cyberpunk 2077. Yes, for the love of God, please don't. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, that's been going around a lot. So they had to put out a tweet and said, "Hey, uh, yeah, everybody, don't don't do this. Yeah, don't don't get your shit hijacked." It's a shame how often we have to keep our guard up for stuff like that. Yeah. Just in every aspect. Not even just video games, just in general. Yeah. A lot of, of scammy scams going on around there. Oh, a lot uh, of scammy scams. Okay, so the Nintendo Giga Leak. This is right up your alley. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Nintendo partners regularly with a, um, a company called IQ. IQ releases a lot of Nintendo stuff in China. Because a Chinese, it, it's due to a lot of international legal things. Chinese companies have to uh, have a part in releasing anything. Like it, an external company cannot release stuff in China, uh, mm -hmm. especially video games. So that's why you see a lot of companies like Epic Games or otherwise partnering with Tencent because Tencent is a Chinese company and they have a presence there. So if you want your game inside of China, you got to partner with a Chinese company. IQ was that for Nintendo. Unfortunately, they suffered a really nasty leak. Uh, it's Ooh. called the Giga Leak for a reason. This thing is fucking massive. Now, of course, I don't have the data. That would be highly illegal. <laughs> um, and the, the person who actually pulled off this leak is uh, either in jail or has just been 
uh, confirmed guilty. Like it's it's not a good situation all around mm. for people involved. Um, but we are learning a lot of interesting tidbits from these leaks and people doing the data mining on them. Uh, such as, yeah, turns out that there is a Luigi in Mario 64, or there was. Um, we have actual models, textures, there are pictures. Luigi was a part of Mario 64, which is really interesting. Something that was a rumor literally since the game came out in 1996. Like, here's how to unlock Luigi. You gotta get all 120 stars and jump on a boo 27 million times, and then you gotta throw your controller through a window and kill your grandma, and then you'll get Luigi. Uh, it turns out, a lot of dead grandmas later, that wasn't the secret to unlocking it. He was oh removed. <laughs> the grandmas. I know. Um, other things, like we've got source code for Mario 64. We've got source code for Ocarina of Time. We've got a bunch of beta stuff from, from Pokemon, from Super Mario World. We've got unreleased games, like Super Mario World 5. Uh, we, have <laughs> we have fucking beta sprites of Yoshi and how he was supposed to look, which looked really similar to Miyamoto's original drawings of the character uh, that he has shown off before. Really happy that Yoshi didn't, up be, it didn't end up being uh, the way that they first envisioned because it looks so fucking stupid. I don't, think oh I, ever, I don't think I ever saw that. Oh, it's so fucking stupid. Um, like, we've got a bunch of sprites. Uh, at one point in Link to the Past, Link had pink hair. Uh, they were going to add in side-scrolling segments into a Super Nintendo Zelda game, just like Zelda 2 on the NES. There's a shit ton of stuff that came out from this leak, and we're still discovering things, we. The gaming community is still discovering things. Um, it's really interesting. It's really cool. One of the people who worked to bring Star Fox 64 to the SNES Mini and to now the, the Nintendo Switch Online service um, there was a like some game dev tooling that somebody compiled and got working again and posted a picture on Twitter. And this person replied and said, oh, my God, I haven't seen that since like the mid fucking 90s. I made this tool to build this game. I didn't think I'd ever see it again. Like a lot of really cool, interesting, nostalgic stuff is happening with this. I'm really, really curious to see what happens to the speed running scene because... We now have source oh, code, source Mario code. 64, yeah. okay. and for Ocarina of Time. People are going to be like, all over that. Ocarina of Time is basically fucking broken at this point. Like they, we figured out memory manipulation based on uh, like save, fi uh, save file file name. Like there's there's a lot of weird stuff that goes on in Ocarina of Time. The game is barely working. Uh, the whole thing is just a pile of hacks on top of hacks. Uh, so with the source code, it means that yeah, we can start to take a closer look at this stuff and figure out, you know, how this actually works. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Um, now, again, like with these ROM hacks and other things, we're not going to be able to take the source code and build stuff out of it because yeah, that's of course. horrifyingly illegal. Mm -hmm. um, but it's going to be interesting to see how this stuff works. Uh, some of the, the best coding secrets are locked up in these old consoles because it's not like today's computers where you're like, yeah, I don't know, man. Let's shove like a 50 megabyte splash image on our shitty website that should just be text. It's like, okay, we have got the computing power of a Casio watch. How do we get a 3D game engine to run on this? Uh, so it's a lot of uh, cool tricks and secrets and optimizations that are going to come to light. I'm really excited from a computer science perspective. Mm. That's a uh, it's pretty cool that all that stuff is that you know fans can actually access it, but it's mm. super not cool that it <laughs> happened and that people are going to jail yeah. for it and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So that kind of sucks, but. I, so one of the ways you can avoid this as a company is how id Software did it, where they said, uh, yeah, when a new version of Doom comes out, mm -hmm. we're just going to release the id Tech source code. Like today, do you want the source code to Doom 3? It's over there. It's on GitHub. Just fucking download it. I don't give a shit. Do you want to know how Doom or Doom 2 works? Yeah, it's, it's fucking... Just look at it, man. Whatever. Do you want to know how Quake works? Yeah, it's open source. It's over there. Go grab it. Yeah. I would but, like to see more companies do stuff like that. Yeah, Nintendo is absolutely the opposite company of id Software. <laughs> like, id, they're a bunch of hackers at heart. 
they love releasing this stuff. Nintendo, they don't want you to know any. Yeah. Right. They got pissed when uh, when soundtrack stuff from Smash Brothers. Uh, oh wow. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. So we have July twenty seventh, twenty twenty. Every player nuke has been disarmed on the PS3 version of Metal Gear Solid V. How's that mechanic work? <laughs> What's this all about, Tom? Yeah, so in MGS5, you can disarm nukes. And there's like a shit ton of nukes. Your job as big boss is to disarm all of them. And the counters, you know, would count down server side. Um, this cutscene is actually already being seen on the PC version of MGS5 because uh, somebody fucked up on their counter, um, which means that uh, players created too many nukes. And in computer science, if you don't use a large enough variable, if, if there's not enough memory to contain these big numbers, they can roll over, which means that like on, on an 8-bit integer, the max, it starts at zero and goes to 255. If you add one to that 255, it wraps around to the bottom and becomes a zero. So uh, on the PC version, players created so many nukes that it actually rolled back over to zero. <laughs> and uh, uh, Konami had to patch that bug, uh, which was great because, you know, we got the you've disarmed all the nukes um, cutscene by creating so many nukes that uh, the world would never be the same. Um, so kind of kind of the opposite of what Kojima was going for. But on the PS3 version, players were able to disarm and disable every single nuke. They actually did it the right way. They brought it down. And there was there was a cool little cutscene. It wasn't like revelatory or incredible, but it's definitely Kojima saying, hey, this is important for our children. We shouldn't have nukes. Because uh, Metal Gear Solid is a very anti-nuclear weapon franchise. Yes. Uh, it's admirable. It's cool. And uh, yeah, it's kind of neat. I honestly never thought that we'd get to this legitimate. It's really cool that they put something in the game that was so unlikely to ever be seen by anybody that requires everybody to do the same thing, right? To, yeah. For everybody to cooperate. It really was the first strand type mechanic. Oh, shit. <laughs> he said it. He said it. But Strange no, I mean, it, that's but having having such like a secret cutscene like that tied to something like that is really really cool. Yeah, I I would love to see more more developers do stuff like that. Agreed. I mean, it took it took the internet what like a little less than a week, all concentrating on PT when that demo came out yeah. to finally figure out. Oh shit, this is a Silent Hill game made yeah. by Kojima. Uh -huh. I, I want to see more stuff like that. Yeah, and and it's it's seeing a mass. Mass cooperation, everybody working together for this this thing. Uh, the same thing with like any games that do the the whole like ARG thing, right? Yeah. Like everybody trying to figure out these things and and unlocking new things and mining the data, and it's it's just cool watching everybody kind of work together for something like that. Indeed. All right. Uh, so yeah, uh, all the news I've got. That's that's all the stuff. I think that's all the things. Um, if you would like to catch one of these podcasts live. We stream them on Twitch and also other gameplay stuff. We stream random things. Uh, Twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector. Um, if you would like to see our tweets, which we treat, we tweet out plays from our community and our plays of the day. Uh, we're on Twitter at 72 PC underscore official. Um, said clips come from our discord, which you can find the link down below. If you scroll down, if you're watching this on Twitch, um, if you go to our website, it has links to everything and the discord 72 pin connector.com. Uh, check us out. And I think, is that about all the things? Oh, YouTube, youtube.com slash 72 pin connector. We post our plays of the month montages, which is a collection of all those plays of the day clips every month. And we post full podcast episodes there too. And with all of that out of the way, I think we're good to get out of here. Thanks for watching yeah. and we'll see you next time. Game see on everyone. everybody.